All right, guys, today we're gonna to talk about optimization, all right? Now I'm gonna start with a very simple example that just contains the word optimization and constraint so we get used to vocabulary words. And then we're gonna look at a couple of examples and how we can use derivatives specifically with this optimization, all right? Now there are other ways to do this, but today's focus is learning how we apply derivatives to this idea of optimization, all right? Okay, so here's our first example. We are going to optimize a equals 3xy with the constraint x plus y equals 20. Now, when we optimize, that usually means one of two things. It usually we want, means that we want a maximum or a minimum, right? That's because, you know, we want to optimize cost, uh, uh, sorry, not cost, profits. We want to optimize the amount of money we come in. We want to optimize uh, the area of a field when we have a certain amount of fencing, right? We want to be able to have the largest field possible. Um, those are maximums. Now, we also want to optimize our costs. We want our costs to be as low as possible, which would be a minimum. We want to optimize uh, the amount of cardboard that we need to use to make a box. We want to minimize the amount of cardboard that we use. So optimization is just what is best. And that what is best is usually a maximum or a minimum. Now, in class last time, we talked about the maximum and minimum would always give us a derivative of zero because both at the top and at the bottom of a curve, you have that flat line, all right? So we want to optimize a equals 3x plus y with this constraint. Most of the problems that you deal with will look something like this. You'll have one equation that has the big thing that you're gonna optimize. Right here we wanna optimize A, which could be area. X and Y could be length and width or something like that. So we're gonna optimize the area, which depends on X and Y. Now, we also want to have some kind of constraint. That constraint gives us restrictions on X and Y. And the constraint here is that X and Y have to equal 20. Or maybe X and Y at a maximum equals 20. Right? Maybe that's the length of string that you have to go around or the amount of fencing or, or something like that. Right? So hopefully that makes sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our constraint and put it into our function so that we only have one variable. Okay? Now most of the time we take derivative with respect to x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this equation for y and then I'm going to put it into the a equation. All right? So I'm going to subtract x. In both of these situations, I'm going to have y equals 20 minus x. So I'm dealing with the constraint. Now, once I have this, which is y equals 20 minus x, I'm going to go ahead and take that 20 minus x, and I'm going to put it up into my original equation, the equation that's the one that I want to optimize. Okay? So when I put it in there, I'm going to have a equals 3 times x times y, but y is 20 minus x. Now at this point, I want to optimize it, or in other words, I want to find either the maximum or the minimum. In order to do that, I need to be able to take the derivative. That's what we want to be able to do today, is be able to optimize by finding the derivative. And so, in order to take a derivative here, I can't do it yet because of the multiplication, and so I am going to distribute that x all right, and so now I have that a equals 3x times 20, which would be 60x, and then the 3x times the minus x would be minus 3x squared, just like that. Now I'm ready to take the derivative because that's a simple polynomial that I can take the derivative of. So I'm going to take dA dx, just like this, dA dx. Derivative of 60x is just 60. You've got enough of these now that you should be comfortable with that. And then the derivative of 3x squared, I'm going to take the 2, bring it in the front, which will be 2 times 3, which is 6. And then I'll subtract 1 from the power, which will just leave me with 6x. Now at this point, I now have the gradient function. And remember, we were just talking about in order to optimize, we want the slope to be 0. We want the derivative to be 0. That gives us either a maximum or minimum. Okay, now we already know, because of the negative in front of the x squared, that this is going to be a negative parabola, right? And so it'll be a negative parabola, therefore the point that we get is going to be a maximum, alright? 
And so we're going to go ahead and solve for this. We're going to say, well, I want the derivative, the gradient, to be 0. So I'm going to put in 0 equals 60 minus 6x. And at this point, we should be able to subtract the 60 to the other side. That will give me negative 60 equals negative 6x. Divide both sides by negative 6, and I get that x equals 10. So at x equals 10, a will be optimized. Now, depending on from there what you need, you could solve for y, right? I could put x equals 10 into this function, 20 minus 10, y is 10. So I could also find y equals 10. I could find a, now that I have x and y, because a equals 3 times x times y. So what is the optimal value for a? Well, it is 3 times 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100, times 3 is 300. So the optimal value of A is 300. All right? So that's the idea of optimization. All right? Now, I'd like for you to watch the next video in which we will do a example question.